Hey there, TRW crew. Matt Vassallo here with the RhinestoneWorld.com. So in this video tutorial, we're going to go over the TRW Stone Wizard version 1.12 and how to make a cool design like this. So this is our striped true type font. Um, looks like a chevron type font that's real popular nowadays. And then we threw some stones around it real quick. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a cool design like this in the TRW Stone Wizard Rhinestone program for Corel Draw. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you can see, the Everything we have available is at the rhinestoneworld.com and our phone number and email address if you do have any questions. So let's go ahead and delete these real quick and we're going to work on this design. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my text tool here in Corel Draw and let's do the letter S this time. So we're going to type out the letter S and we're going to put it in an uppercase. And then we're going to go over here to our fonts in the TRW Stone Wizard and we're going to type in TRW and that's going to pull up any TRW true type font that you've purchased on our website. So I know my striped bold font is right here. So I'm going to go to the NB, which is with no boxes. And I'm going to go ahead and enlarge this a little bit. Now, the way that we created this font, very easy. In the wizard, we just go to our edit tab and hit two color magic text. Now we have our two color text there. And we do have the trapping method built into our true type font here. So as you can see, if we go to view and go to our wireframe, you'll see that we do have the trapping method in there to be able to use your glitter vinyls as well. So let's go back to our enhance frame here. Now what we're going to do is we want to throw some stones around this. So we got our S here. Let's see our size. And actually what we want to do real quick is I want to go ahead and just change that to curves real quick. So I know that my design right now is 10 inches tall by 8 inches wide. That's a little big. So I'm going to lock my um, perspective there, lock my ratio, and I'm going to make this one... Let's go about 6.2 inches tall, and that's going to keep it proportionate. So now it's 4.7 inches wide by 6.2 inches tall. Now what we, I want to do is I have, um, with my outline there, you can see that I have everything cut out in between there. So if I do a stone uh, fill to the outside, it's going to recognize all those inside points too, which we don't want to do for the way we're creating this design. So what I would do is I'm just going to click on the orange there, and then I'm going to create a boundary around it. So if I click on boundary, now you'll see we just have a boundary of that S, okay? So I hit control Z to go back there. And then what I'm gonna do, those of you that don't have obviously a custom toolbar like this to find your boundary, um, all you're gonna do is go to arrange and then shaping and you'll find boundary right there. Okay, so those of you that don't have that, that's no problem. It's still in Corel Draw right there. So now I'm going to create a boundary around this. So I'm going to go to my Place and Fill feature in the TRW Stone Wizard. I'm going to do a one island to the outside. I want to add stones, and I'm going to go a contour spacing of 0 0.075. And I know that's going to throw me right along the outside right there. So if I go in here, I'm going to detect corners. I hit Island Fill, and that's what I'm going to get right there. So that looks great right there. I'm going to highlight the entire design, clear my pass. Now what do I, I want to do is I want to get rid of my original boundary. We don't need that anymore because we already created our path. We used it for what we needed to. Now I'm going to click on one of my pink stones right here. I'm going to click on same color and I'm going to merge my overlap. So that's going to fix those right there. Now what I want to do, you might want to do a little bit of manual editing. Let's see if we can fit two in there, which we can. That looks good there. That there, what we can do is if we wanted to, if I zoom out, it almost looks like it makes it, looks like it's missing some stones there. So that's not a big deal. And I'm going to show you what we might be able to do to make that look a little better. That's going to be a little too close. So I probably will go ahead and go with the middle there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, yeah, let's probably do it this way. I'm going to show you one of our other tools here real quick that's very easy. So I'm going to do a three-point pen tool. So in your pin tools, they'll be over here on the side. I can just hit three and I'm going to go center to center and add it right there. And then I'm going to go over here to our edit tab and I'm going to go, oh, I'm sorry, our place and fill tab and I'm going to add stones to the path. So that added two more stones. Let's see if we can fit. We can actually fit three in there. So I just hit the arrow there, added one more and then let's go clear pass. Now you're going to see there's going to be a little bit of overlapping there and that's where we can fix this. So I'm just going to double click on my orange here and you can see I can edit my nodes a little bit. So I'm going to pull this node in a tiny bit there 
I'm going to arrange this handle a tiny bit here. Arrange this one a tiny bit. Let's pull this in a tiny bit more. And that's looking good so far on that side. Now on this side right here, I'm going to do a similar type thing. I'm going to pull this one in a little bit. I'm going to pull this one in a little bit. And I think we are looking pretty good there. Now we have those stones going through there. So now what I can probably do is edit these a tiny bit and fit another one up in there. And it looks like it is going to allow us to fit another one in there. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to make that look a little bit tighter, a little bit better. And it's got the stones going through that S. So even though it didn't have enough room for that, you can manipulate it with editing your nodes. And that's going to make that design look a lot better. So see how the stones hit that a lot better now. It makes it look better. It flow, flows through there compared to the top right here. So again, up here, we're going to do that exact same thing. Um, probably going to be easier to just add two stones. We could do the add stones to path, but it's probably going to be easier to actually do it this way. So let's go here, here, and again, I left click. Now, as I'm dragging, right click, you'll see a little plus come up under the arrow right there. And then when you let go, it actually copies it. Okay, so let's edit these nodes a little bit. Again, double click on our orange here. Pull this down a tiny bit. Edit this handle a tiny bit. And it looks like we're good there. And then on this one, I see my node right here that I need to add. We'll edit that one a tiny. Move that one over there a little bit. Edit our handle here a little bit. And that looks pretty good there. So you can see it's not touching on our glitter vinyl or HTV or whatever we're going to use. Whether it's the easy weed, the glitter, the holographic, anything. Now we know that the stones aren't touching that area. So there you go. You are pretty much done with this entire design, even with editing and everything. So now we want to change it to the colors that we want. So let's click on this one here and we will go ahead and select same color. We're going to turn all of those to a crystal, so I'm going to type CRY. I want this orange to be magic glitter, and we're going to make that a silver magic glitter. And I want this black to be a purple glitter, so I'm going to click that on the purple glitter. Highlight the entire design. Come over here to mockups. We want to throw this on, let's say, a burnout women's burnout shirt here. Click on our women's burnout shirt. It's going to throw it on there perfectly. Now, again, you can't see the stones only because you can see right there we have them as set as crystal right now. So no problem. What we can do is click on our, I'm going to hold control, click on the shirt. We're going to turn the shirt to black with a left click and then right click on one of these grays to give us our burnout look. Now I'm going to hold control, click on the background, and I'm going to change my background to that grayish white color. And what I'm going to do now is I actually want to get rid of this logo because we're going to use this as another one of our dollar deals for you guys. Uh, for those of you that may not have Corel or the Stone Wizard yet and, and don't really have the ability to create this quite yet. So we can get you this design that we created here. And then what we're also going to do is um, I want to throw a some bling on there and I want to make this look like stones. So I'm going to click on my design and hit Magic Stones. That gives us our rhinestone simulation look right there. Now I'm going to click on magic bling and we're going to just throw some different bling areas in here. And that looks pretty good. We got five different bling areas in there. Give it that bling look on the actual Mac on the actual mockup. Now I'm going to throw in copyright and this is going to be our watermark. And we're going to put this watermark at about a 96% transparency. Add watermark and you can see it doesn't take away from the image on the shirt and take away from the design, but you can see that it does have copyright across there. So we are good to go with that. Now what we can do is go back to our original design and we want to go ahead and split this original design apart for our templates now. So very easy. I just highlighted the entire design. I go to templates. I create TRW magic templates. It's going to run through. I know we have the stones, the one color vinyl, the second color vinyl. And there it is, three templates. There's our rhinestone template, our first vinyl, and our second vinyl. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring those, and I want to save them. So I'm going to highlight the entire design. I'm going to go to export in the TRW Stone Wizard here. And I'm going to export the TRWS striped 
and I'm going to call it a TRWS striped multi because it's a multi deck. And then I'm going to go ahead and export my EPS file. And there you go. Hit save. It's exported as an EPS. If you have the silhouette cameo, you probably want to export the SVG file and save that. And if you're just using it, want to pull it up later in Corel Draw, save to CDR. And we are good there. Save. And save is finished. Back here to our actual mock-up. Highlight the entire design. Make sure it's in your workspace. It always has to be in your workspace. Uh, we'll move it down to, let's say, a 6-inch tall design. And this is going to be our mock-up. So we want to export our mock-up as a PNG, of course. So we save that design. And then we have our design that we want to actually place on the website. So let's go back to here. And we're going to get rid of the templates that we created there. And I'm going to highlight this entire design here. I'm going to go to my mockups. I'm going to create a mockup without a shirt. Yes, we want to break the blend and the groups. And there you go. There's our S design. Click on it. Magic stones. Click on our magic bling. Let's add some bling stars in there. Make it look very cool. Bling, bling. We got our glitter. Bling, 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 and bling. So we got some bling. I, we, we need one more bling there. This one's got some mega bling on it. So let's throw some bling everywhere around there. Okay, so we got our bling everywhere. Let's go ahead and change the name of our design. We got the TRW, TRWS striped multi design. Okay, and then of course down here you have that it's crystal stones. You got the actual size of the design, how many stones are in it. And your logo, we need to throw a watermark on there, the rhinestoneworld.com. We're going to throw that at about 85% transparency, so it shows up a little bit more on this part. So I'm going to add watermark. You can see the rhinestoneworld.com perfectly there. I'm going to shrink this design down to about a 7-inch design. And I'm going to go to export. And this one is our image. And I'm going to export PNG. And we save that. And we are good to go. Now we have an EPS. We have an SVG. We have a CDR. We have our mock-up to show our customer. And then we have our mock-up for our website. So how easy was that? We created that design from scratch. Got it all listed to be able to put on your website. Got an um, actual mock-up to be able to send to your customer. And we have the EPS, the SVG, and the CDR all in a, probably about 11 or 12 minutes max for that design. And a great looking design that we even had to do some editing with the nodes to make it look perfect. So that's our design, our finished design right there. As you can see, it looks awesome. It's ready to go. It's ready to cut. Of course, when you're working with the heat transfer vinyl, make sure that you mirror it. You always want to mirror the heat transfer vinyl. And then the rhinestone part of the template with the sticky flock, you want to cut that normal. So so anything that you see in this video, right below this video, we're actually going to have the um, link to get this font that we use, which is our striped HTV font that we have available on the website. So you can click on that link. It will bring you right to the font that we used here. And then also we do have the link to all of our heat transfer vinyls of our glitter vinyls, our easy weeds, our holographics. So a link right to there. So anything you see in this video, then you'll have an easy link to be able to find it on our website website at www.therhinestoneworld.com. That's www.therhinestoneworld.com. If you do have any questions, make sure to give us a call. Number is 941-755-1696. Again, this is Matt with therhinestoneworld.com, and you guys all have a wonderful day.